Hello, my name is Lewis Berner from Microsoft SQL Server User Education. The following SQL Server failover clustering video is presented by Microsoft Senior Program Manager, Max Varen. Here we will show you how to add a node to an existing SQL Server 2008 failover cluster instance. Previously, we installed a single node failover cluster on node N1. And here we're going to actually add a node to it on node N2. To do that, you run setup on the additional node that you are trying to add to. So in this case, we're going to run setup on node N2. To do that on the installation media, you click on setup. And on the landing page, under the installation tab, There's an add node to a SQL Server failover cluster option. This launches a wizard to add a node to an existing SQL Server 2008 failover cluster. One of the first things that has been run here is a rule check. As part of the rule check, we check the node status information, and that includes the Windows Management Instrumentation Service, whether it is operational and running because we use that actually for to, uh, to gather the information from the existing failover cluster instance. There are also other checks that are common to all the other setup operations. Once you confirmed all the rules have been successfully run, setup leads you into the next phase where it goes and installs the setup support files. Those are the files that are necessary for setup to run on the current node. Note that SQL Server 2008 setup is different than the previous installations. So here in this case, to add a node to a failover cluster instance, you run the add node operation on the node that you are trying to add. And as part of the next step here, we actually run setup support rules. We recommend that you check the status of all those rules here. The ones that are actually passed shown as a green checkbox. Uh, the ones that actually have a problem uh, or warnings are highlighted for you. We recommend that you take a look at all the warnings and errors. For all the errors, there are, the setup actually is blocked. For the warnings, setup is not blocked, but we recommend that you check them, making sure that they're, they're okay for your particular environment. Here on this screen, you have an option to add a product key or use the free edition. Since in our previous installation on the existing failover cluster, we used a product key, here we're going to actually supply the same product key. After you check the license terms and accept the license terms, setup shows you the existing SQL Server failover cluster instance names as a drop box. And also in the table below, you see all the instances that have been already installed. Here we have two instances, uh, two clustered instances, SQL 1 and SQL 2. As you note here, on SQL 1 only exists on node N1, versus SQL 2 has been pr previously installed on both nodes, node N1 and node N2. In this example, we're going to add this current node N2 to SQL Server cluster instance SQL 1 and you have the SQL Server instance name, SQL1, selected in the drop-down. Upon clicking Next, SQL Server Setup goes and gathers all the information from the existing clustered instance, SQL1, and then populates the service accounts names for you. What you need to do on this page is to supply the passwords, because those are required. If you hit Next without supplying the passwords, you're going to get error messages, as shown in this particular example. So in this example, both database engine and agent services need to be specified together with their passwords. Note that startup type cannot be changed here. After you supply the passwords information for all the accounts, uh, error and usage reporting page shows up. Here we recommend that you actually send us feedback because it actually allows us to find usage problems and also error reports and then we can actually provide those as updates as fixes in our future releases. 
After that, we run additional rules that are specific to the add node operation. Here, as you see, we have a quite a few rules that actually are applied. And if all of them pass, setup allows to proceed. Otherwise, you will have to correct the problem and uh, resume the, the setup operation. On the ready to add node page, we'll give you a brief summary of all the features that have been selected from the existing SQL Server Failover cluster instance. Note that up until now, you didn't actually specify any kind of features, because we actually already figured out from the existing cluster instance what features you have installed. And then we replicate the same information over here on this additional node as well. From the media, from the setup media, we go and install all the product features, and then we configure them based on the existing SQL Server Failover cluster instance. So we're adding this node to the instance ID, SQL1, and instance name, SQL1. Note that replication on full-text search, and in this case, integration services, have been already picked up as well. Here, uh, for every setup operation, just like any other setup operation, we generate a configuration INI file as well. This shows you all the input settings that have been factored into this particular add node operation. So as you see at the top, we have the action equals add node, and we have uh, instance name, SQL1, and failover cluster group, SQL2008 group 1, and SQL server failover cluster network name is vSQL1. This is the network name that is used for client connections, and below that we also have listed the accounts that have been factored into this particular add node. We recommend that you check the command line uh, usage in terms of the configuration file being supplied as an input to it. Because once, once you do the add node over here on one node, you can actually use this configuration INI file to add additional nodes on the additional nodes through the command line. And after you hit next, add node progress shows you the actions that setup is taking. As setup completes the add node operation, you're going to see all the features that have been successfully installed. And another thing to note over here is that uh, the add node operation doesn't cause any downtime on the existing SQL Server failover cluster instance. In other words, there's no impact on the existing instance. You can add node without any worry about taking the instance down and causing client connections to drop. After the installation, you can actually check the summary log file that includes detailed information about what happened during the add node operation, all the discovery information from the prior instances, as well as all the detailed inputs that have been supplied to set up, and the result of the feature installations for each of the selected features. At the end, we added another node, node N2, to the existing SQL1 instance. At this point, we have two nodes that are actually participating into the failover behavior for SQL, SQL 1 instance. In other words, right now, node N1 is still the active node, owning all the cluster resources for SQL 1. But if something goes wrong with node N1, or any, any service, any cluster service goes down on node N1, then node 2 will be used um, as the acting owning node for the SQL 1 instance. That concludes the addition of node to SQL Server 2008 failover cluster instance. Uh, you can add additional nodes after this by using the same procedure. Each time you add a node, you actually increase the high availability of your instance by one. That completes the add node session. Thank you for your time. We hope you found this information of significant value and we'd like to hear what you think about it. To rate this video and provide comments, please use the feedback link in the upper right-hand corner of the video homepage. Thank you.